one of the most time consuming parts of production has got to be post production. And yes, I'm talking about editing. We know it, we love it, but we all kind of hate it too. I think to a certain degree, when you're just there at the final hours trying to get a project done and you've spent maybe a hundred hours of your life working on a particular video or edit, whatever it is, and you're just going, I just want this to be done. Also, you can move on to the next one. Editing is tedious, it's time consuming because it's kind of infinite. You can always do more, you can always spend more time if you have the time to keep working on something versus a shoot that's happening, it's kind of live and you could add more days, but really in one day, there's only so much you can get done. Editing is kind of the, the pit, the black hole, the abyss of time consumption when it comes to production because we've all been there. Rev 4, Rev 5, Rev 12, it goes on and on and on. But one thing I wanted to call your attention to is this tool called Eddy AI. There's been a lot of advances in the AI space. Of course, everyone knows ChatGPT and Claude and Copilot and Google's got their thing, Apple's doing their thing, everyone's doing AI. And it's very good at generating images, always getting better. We even have generative video with things like Sora. And I think Mid Journey is experimenting. I don't know about video, but there's a lot. Pika Labs is another one. There's every day, there's some new AI startup that'll pop up into your feed saying, hey, check out our thing. But one of the ones that's most promising to me, and I can't recommend yet, but I wanna bring your attention to, is Eddy AI, basically your assistant editor. This won't work for every project in its current form. They're still testing it out, but the advances they've made in the past couple of months are quite impressive, and I think it's only going to get better. My goal, my hope for the future would be that they get bought up by Adobe, by Blackmagic, by Apple, if it was Final Cut, or maybe just better integrated into the actual software. There is some decent integration already, but they are a separate company. So there's a little bit of those kind of like workarounds, the extra steps you have to do to kind of like feed it footage and then like circle it back. I'm sure it's all stuff that's gonna get sorted out in the future and it can only get better, right? But for now, if you want something, you're trying to dabble in the AI space, looking for like, what is an AI editor? Can I make, can I give something my footage and have it spit back and edit? Yes, kind of with Eddy AI. It's got some pretty cool features now with B-roll and A-roll logging. It's not gonna do 100% of the work for you. And I should mention, this isn't an ad, this isn't a commercial, they haven't paid me to say all this. I just wanted to bring your attention to it because for as many AI platforms that are out there, there's a lot that maybe go under the radar that you're less familiar with. So it's definitely one to check out and see if it'll help you with your workflows because maybe this can actually save you hours or days or maybe even months in the long run, long run if it does what you actually need it to do, which may, may or may not apply. Every project is different, every workflow is different. If it works for you, great. If it doesn't, no sweat. I'm currently not using it, but I'm keeping my eye on it because it is something that I could see myself benefiting from one day if I can say, hey, take all this footage and give me an edit that's kind of the, the perfect world, I think. Now, granted, you may say, hey, that's gonna take all the editor jobs. I don't know, I view it as a tool. AI is a tool, just like Photoshop and Premiere and Resolve. They're all tools that have changed the way work gets done. Films used to be edited with scissors, and now it's all done in a computer. F photography used to be done in a dark room, and now it's mostly just done in Photoshop. So times change, tools change, and jobs change. An editor is still valuable for someone to run the prompts, run the AI, and if it helps speed up workflows, I'm all for that. There's far too much time spent in editing. That's just tedious, repetitive, hunting down stuff. That's the type of stuff I wanna put on AI so that people can be more creative and express themselves through their art the way they want. Hey, if you have a great idea for a short film, for a movie, for a documentary, I want you to achieve that. I want to achieve that. And if I can get that done at a faster rate, at a cheaper cost, then great, we can all benefit from that. So something like Eddie AI is that perfect sweet spot that I've been looking for. And I hope there's even more competitors out there in addition to Eddie AI, because if we just leave it to one company, you know, they'll do their best. But obviously, I think a lot of times competition makes things get better quicker. Uh, so I'm not even saying like they're the, the best one or the only one. I think there's a few others out there. But from my research and what I've come across, 
Eddie AI does seem to kind of be primed in the best position to be what I'm looking for, which is an assistant editor AI. That's why it's called Eddie AI, like Eddie the editor. So if you want to check it out, I, I think it is free. I'm pretty sure. Let's check out their pricing page because I haven't checked it since it was free. Um, let's see, what do they got for pricing? So you can do some podcast multicam edits. That's not anything all that special. Plenty of other AI uh, programs will do that. I've even done a video of how you can just do that live from an ATEM board without any AI. Uh, so there's some simple stuff, uh, viral social clips fast. You can do that with something like Opus AI is another one that you've probably seen. Very popular. Uh, that's kind of like a cloud-based web editor. But I've been looking for something that integrates directly with Premiere with my original footage. And Eddie will do that. Uh, you can create rough cuts in seconds. You can log your A and B rolls in one click. I'm just reading some of this because it's like their newest update type stuff. So here's the pricing if you're curious. Uh, obviously, they're a company that need to make some money, but there is a free kind of trial thing you can test out if you want. Again, this isn't a commercial. I'm not saying you should. It's just something to keep an eye on. Play around, experiment with the tools that are out there because I promise you now is the time to get your hands on some of this stuff so you can learn it early and integrate it in your workflow because if you don't, you're gonna be left behind. It feels, especially with the AI stuff, it feels very similar to the DSLR revolution from almost 20 years ago where there was just this giant shift in how work got done. And there's plenty of people who held on to the old ways for far too long, but everyone who kind of realized the benefits, realized the upsides of shooting with a DSLR, even though it came with its own set of challenges and hurdles, just like this AI stuff, it's not perfect, not yet. But if you can learn it now and get in early, you can figure out, okay, what? how can you optimize your workflow? Instead of spending 10 hours on a particular task. What if that was only 10 minutes? What if it was only 10 seconds? Those are the kind of savings that I'm talking about when it comes to AI, because that's how much faster it is than some of the tedious human stuff. There's another platform called Shade. I think there's Shade Inc. That's kind of also got some AI features in it as far as like cloud storage um, and collaboration via like a, a hard drive in, in the cloud, a hard drive on the internet. Shade is another one that'll index all your footage and kind of uh, tell you, hey, here's a shot of a fox or here's a, a picture of a tree and kind of kind of give you some of those um, keyword tagging abilities, more of the metadata side. And they probably have more features that I'm not even expressing. Because again, I'm not trying to do their marketing. I'm not making a commercial for them. I'm just telling you what's out there so you can go start investigating and looking. I think a lot of times we get a little tunnel vision on what's working and it can be tedious and kind of painful to try new things and experiment because a lot of times it doesn't work as well as it should. In fact, that's what I found with Eddie that I'm like, yeah, it, it, it kind of does what I needed to, but not quite as perfectly. So I'm, I'm spending more time just trying to figure out this software when I could have just done it myself the normal manual way but that's kind of the push and pull of it. You gotta kind of do that yourself to realize, okay, it's not quite there yet, but I also wanna be aware of it so that in the future, when they do make improvements, when they do adjust and they come out with a V3, a V4, a V5, you know what you're looking for. I would say the same is true of any software that you're using. You know, Don't just use just Photoshop, try other things. Don't use just Premiere or just Resolve or just Final Cut. Try other things so you can know if you're missing something, if there's something better, or you can just appreciate what you already have, which is also a good mindset to have. If you're looking for an assistant AI editor, check out Eddie. Let me know if you find a better one, because that's the other thing I'm looking forward to. I don't really care for Adobe adding generative video to Premiere. That's not what I'm after. I'm not looking to extend my clips by two seconds. Is it a cool feature? Yeah, I guess, but I don't need that. I have my footage. I want it to be processed. I want to feed it interviews and B-roll and all this great stuff and say, hey, read these transcripts. Hey, cut me a, you know, a rough cut. Give me an assembly. Give me something that I can then take and further manipulate to be even better. There's no reason why right now we've got all these fractured pieces. We've got uh, royalty-free music and sound effects, and we even have voiceover now with AI, and we've got all of the footage that we're shooting, we've got stock footage, we've got generative footage, we have all these fragmented pieces. And I'm looking for that thing to come along and, and kind of combine them all because that is what an editor does, right? Takes the stock footage, takes the music, takes the sound effects, lays it over an interview. A lot of that is very time consuming. If AI can do half of that, 
that's, that's incredible. If AI can do 75% of that, 90% of that, that's where I want the human element to come in and finish the job and adjust and spend those time. The, the Honestly, the hardest part of any edit is usually that last 10%. It takes time to get through the bulk of the content, but that's usually easy. Cutting out mistakes, cutting out flubs, bad takes, shaky footage, stuff you know you're not gonna use. Cutting stuff out is like the junk, the filler. Okay, you're just kind of clearing it up. You're shaving it off. I look at editing like sculpting or carving or something. You're just getting rid of a lot of the junk. That is easy, but it's very time consuming. If AI can do that, and I can focus on the last 10%, the quality control, the the stylus, the 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 creativity, the whatever it is, the the je ne sais quoi of like what you add to the to the piece. That's that last ten percent, but that's the part that honestly takes the longest sometimes because it's I don't know so precise. You need to spend time making it polished. Those final things matter, just like sculpting, just like carving. The bulk can be done not quickly but easily. It's the final details that matter the most. And that's what I want to reserve for the human to really finesse and fine tune exactly what they want. But let's get there quicker. Let's use AI to our advantage. And hopefully it can become just like a native feature within Premiere. That's what I would hope from Adobe or anyone else. Apple with Final Cut, Blackmagic with DaVinci Resolve. Build these tools in native. I don't want to have to upload my footage to the cloud. I don't want to have to sync with your servers. I don't want to, I have all my footage ready to go scrub it, analyze it and spit out, you know, give me, give me something to look at. Give me an edit like an assistant editor would. That's where I think, uh, AI can be a huge time savings right now with how it currently exists. Again, try it out. Maybe it'll work for your projects. Maybe it won't, but certainly into the future, the more native it can be within the traditional, you know, kind of editing apps. I, I, I want the control. I don't want to lose the control that I have with Premiere but I want to get there quicker with some of these assembly cuts. So I think that's kind of where we're at, where there's like this precipice, this tipping point where like, if we just keep moving another year, two, three years, certainly we'll be at a much different spot than we are now. But it's kind of interesting to be at that precipice, at that cusp of a huge change, because for as fast as this stuff is moving, how great it's getting, it's still not good enough yet, but we're so close. And I'm, I'm looking forward to it. I'm excited for that next wave uh, transformation of where we can do so much more with less and do it all faster. That's the type of, of I don't know, the, the revolutions that happen with just efficiency. And I don't know, it changes so much and it can happen overnight. So this is one to check out and keep your eye on.